Hey everyone, I'm Jacob Castro and welcome to another video here on Jacob's Aquarium. Hope you guys are doing good and I hope your tanks are doing good as well. So today I wanted to give you guys a tour of Super Pond and all the plants I currently have growing in it. But before we get into that, I wanted to answer a question that I get asked a lot on my channel and that is, how do you maintain water clarity in your pond? So because the way I design the pond and because of the regular maintenance I do on the pond, I'm able to keep the pond looking crystal clear. In regards to the way I've designed it, I've designed it in a way to where I'm able to use micron socks. And what a micron is, is it's a little pore in the fabric that's just a hole that allows things to flow through it. And the smaller that hole or the smaller the micron, you know, the less um, things will be able to flow through it. So anything bigger than that will get caught in the micron sock. I chose to use a 100 micron sock and <laughs> some of you out there may think I'm crazy because a 100 micron sock is not typically recommended for an aquarium just because it, the, the pores in a 100 micron sock are so tiny that it, it captures everything. The, the, the micron sock that's typically recommended for aquariums and, and ponds or whatever is typically a 200 micron sock. Uh, the pores in a 200 micron sock are much bigger and it, it doesn't really capture every little fine particle, but it captures enough to uh, keep an aquarium or a pond clear, you know. But I chose to use a 100 micron sock. Some people may think I'm crazy, but I think it's great. I would say it's equivalent to like when you buy a air purifier for your home and you know your home doesn't really seem that bad. It smells okay. It doesn't seem like it's that dusty but when you turn on that air purifier and you look at the filter after a week and you see all the dust that it's captured you realize just how dusty <laughs> your home is you know. So you'll realize just how dusty your aquarium or your pond is if you were to ever install a micron sock on your system. So along with that, I also um, try to address any potential issues as soon as they happen in the pond. I'll give you an example. There, there's sometimes where I'll get plants from my wholesaler and I'll put them in the pond and I'll notice that there's a little tiny little speck of, you know, green hair algae growing on one of them. Now, some people may be like, oh, it's not a big deal. It'll probably just die off. It won't, you know, not a big deal it's just a small little thing you know that small little thing can turn into a big thing very very quickly so if I ever notice any algae growing in the pond no matter how small it is I always address it as soon as I notice it I dump in a bunch of algicide and it usually kills the algae within two to three days and then the pond from there on out is crystal clear and there's no, and there's no algae growing in it at all the algicide I use is API Algae Fix. I've used it for years and it has been an absolute godsend for me because I've tried other products that claim to keep your pond or your tank crystal clear and no algae growing, you know. Um, but it all seemed to be just a gimmick. But for some reason, API Algae Fix has been the only product that has actually worked every single time they're not paying me to say that it's just the product i use and it's worked very well for me and it's it's helped me maintain the or, or keep the pond algae free which is really important because my customers do not like algae and i don't blame them i don't like it either so that's it as far as keeping the pond crystal clear it all comes down to regular maintenance cleaning heavy cleaning once in a while and it comes down to the filtration system using a micron sock and I should also mention having a decent sized pump to push enough water through it. I think the one I use now is almost 2,000 gallons per hour, so that also helps as well. And then it also comes down to addressing any problems that could potentially become much bigger problems really quickly. Now let's get to the tour and I now want to show you guys all the beautiful gorgeous plants I currently have growing in the pond and don't forget all these plants that you're about to see are available right now on my website jacobsaquarium.com I should say though because people have done this before <laughs> they see the plant in the video that I uploaded three years ago and expect, expect it to be available on my website 
just know that every week I get shipments of plants and they're all different sizes. I'm not really promised a certain size from my supplier. So the plants you see in this video right now may not be available soon after the video. So if you're watching this video as soon as it's uploaded, which I typically upload my videos the same day I film them, you should have a good chance of getting the plants that you see in this video. But as time goes by from the date this video was uploaded, the chances of you getting the plants you see in this video are highly unlikely just because I restock a lot and I go through plants like crazy. I'm selling them every single day. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I just want to say that because people have watched videos of mine in the past and uh, they've seen plants in videos and, you know, they want to buy that particular size or color, you know, and a, a, a plant's color can change based on a variety of factors. Its size can change as well uh, just because I don't, I'm not promised certain sizes from my supplier. So just keep in mind that the plants you see in this video may not be available in, uh, in the future after this video is uploaded and just don't get mad at me. Don't send me hate emails and, and comments. Just calm down. <laughs> All right, let's get to the tour. All right, so let's get this tour started. This is Super Pond. Take a look at that. It's big. <laughs> All right, let's start over here. So uh, I got Glossostigma in this basket right here. And uh, you can see that uh, it's, it's just floating here, which is not typical. People don't really grow it this way. But um, I keep my glossostigma like this just because i sell it so quickly there's really no sense in planting it in the uh in the pond and i also have a bin where it's already growing anyways so i just keep the ones that i have that i, I resell quickly in uh, this basket and uh, if the glossostigma i have growing in the pond is big enough i i harvest it uh, from there as well um, but you can see that there's some purling going on and uh, this, this plant grows quite well as a floating plant, actually, shockingly. <laughs> uh, you can see some, some purling bubbles right there. And some leaves are um, submerged and some are immersed. Um, but it grows, it grows quite well, which is uh, pretty shocking. I tried it and it worked. I didn't think it would work, but it did. <laughs> so I got some bulbitis in the other basket. And then I got some java moss over there in the other basket. And uh, we'll get to the other ones as we work our way around the pond. Uh, so you may notice that I have uh, some empty bins here. And uh, this space right here was previously empty. But I chose to get some more bins and sand because I wanted some more uh, spots to grow plants. Because uh, I wanted to kind of expand my product line and offer uh, an even wider variety of plants. As if I don't have a big selection as it is. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to be growing some um, more rare species in these bins, and I should be getting those plants soon. So this is just uh, some nice open real estate here. Pretty cool. And I got some more empty spots over there, but I'll be getting uh, three more bins to fill those spots up uh, pretty soon here. So let's start right here. This is a Bacopa Caroliniana. And uh, this plant's really cool, pretty easy to grow. Uh, it comes in immersed and um, it, it pretty much transitions pretty quickly in the pond. You can see all the new growth at the top. And uh, the new growth is, um, is a much uh, darker reddish color than the uh, leaves uh, below it. So that's due to all this nice gorgeous sun we get out here. Um, so next to that I have uh, some Myro Green. A Myro Green is pretty cool. It's similar to like uh, Hornwort and Kambaba. <laughs> um, this is a really cool plant. I like this one uh, because it kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, like like a forest, like a, like a Sequoia forest. I think it just looks really cool. Uh, next to that we got some hair grass. And this is regular hair grass, by the way, the big kind. This will get really big in your aquarium or pond or whatever, wherever you want to grow it. And next to that, we got some dwarf hair grass, of course, much smaller, staying true to its name. Pretty cool. Next to that, we got some wisteria, and you'll see a lot of this in the pond because this is one of my top selling plants. People buy this stuff for me every single day, so I try to keep plenty of it in stock. And uh, I guess now we'll focus on the bins in front of, um, in front of uh, the bins closest to the wall. 
uh, now that uh, there's plants in them because <laughs> there weren't plants in those. <laughs> so in here we got some uh, microsword as you can see over there and uh, as I film this I'm trying to manually focus so just bear with me here guys. And then I also got some of these uh, moss mats as well. This is all flame moss and uh, I'm trying to grow this out just because it's so hard to get from my from my wholesaler so I'm trying to grow it myself and uh, it's growing pretty well. I have to take them out occasionally and uh, you know shake off all the the dust from them or you know debris that collects on them from here in the pond but other than that they grow pretty well and I'm uh, quite satisfied with that. Um, over here I got some uh, jungle fowl growing um, as you can see though it's just uh, little shoots little stems runners it's not really anything uh, that big yet I'm trying to grow this plant myself as well because this is another uh, really hard one to get from my wholesaler they don't really have it in stock all the time and people like this plant so trying to grow this one myself as well next to that we got some uh, cardinal plants these are really cool uh, these come in immersed and they're mostly purple but then they lose all that purple coloration and then they're mostly green but I still think it's a cool looking plant in this bin we got some fissidens uh, mats in there, fissidens fis moss mats, and then I just got a few experiment plants growing in there. Um, well, one of them is uh, Anubis nana petite. Not too sure what the other one is, but uh, you can see that it's uh, growing uh, quite nicely in there, actually. The Anubis nana petite seems like it has a new leaf on it, so that's encouraging. <laughs> Next to that we got some Marble Queen swords and... Uh, as you can see, none of these plants or bins are labeled, and you may be thinking, well, how do I know what plants are what? You know, guys, it, it just comes down to experience. I've been growing these plants for so long, I can recognize what they look like just by looking at them, pretty much. So it's very easy for me to tell. So we got some Marble Queen swords in here, and then some Red Reuben uh, swords over there. Uh, got, only, got only two of those left. <laughs> they sell like hotcakes. And then I got some uh, um, some uh, Italian Val right here, and that plant grows like a weed. And then some uh, Chainsaw, this is the broadleaf variety, pretty cool. And then over here, Red Reuben, actually I got more than just two. <laughs> I guess those I'm trying to grow out, I just remembered that. So this is Red Reuben Sword, got plenty of that. And then uh, Compact Hygrophilia, this is a cool plant if you have a small nano aquarium that you want to grow Hygrophilia. Hygrophilia typically is a really large plant and um, it's hard to grow in a smaller tank. But this variety, the Compact variety, is uh, stays true to its name, grows compact and is uh, really beautiful um, in a smaller nano aquarium. Next to that we got some red flame swords and as you can see, this is what I talked about earlier, these ones came in huge. These are really, really big. So if you have a big uh, tank full of goldfish maybe, this is a good goldfish plant because it's hard for them to tear it apart. This would be a great option for you. Next to that we got some Kleiner Bar swords. Uh, once again, these came in big as well, so great for a bigger tank. But you can also just trim all the big leaves off and uh, put it in a smaller tank. Uh, you just got to trim it often to keep it small but uh, really cool plants I really like these because these these remind me of you know like like a traditional pond plant that's what they 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 make me think of when I see them next to that we got some contortion valve contortion valve is like the coolest plant the leaves grow as a, like as like in a spiral of uh, shape you know it's really really neat I like this one and it grows quite fast as well and then we got some jungle red over there. Got some little runners growing down there. And uh, some big guys in the back. Not too much of that left though. <laughs> then I got some dwarf Sagittaria in the back right here. And that lo that's looking nice. Got a little pearl in action going on. One little bubble I can see there due to all the nice CO2 in the pond. Then we got some pearl weed. Uh, growing in here. I had a bunch of this, but I sold it all. So now I'm trying to regrow um, what I have left, <laughs> which is not much as you can see. But uh, this plant grows very fast as well. So trust me, I should have plenty of this in about, you know, two or three months, maybe, maybe sooner than that. And then right here, we got some Amazon swords. And as you can see, uh, some of the leaves are transparent. Those are leaves that are dying off because those were um, immersed leaves. 
So this plant is uh, transitioning. So chances are, if you order this plant, by the time you order it, it should be transitioned to its um, um, submerged, submerged uh, state, which is what everybody wants. But uh, to me, it's not really a big deal. Plants transition fine for me, so I don't con I'm not concerned whether I get them immersed or, or, or submerged, but some people are. In front of that, we got Proserpinica palustris. Some people call this plant mermaid weed. Uh, I just call it Proserpinica palustris. <laughs> <laughs> really, really cool plant. I really like this one. Uh, next up, we got Nasea Golden. One of my favorite plants. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Golden color, reddish color. Not so much fast growing, but still a beautiful plant. I really, really like this one. And then right here, we got some Pogostemum, Pogostemum stellatus. <laughs> Crazy name. Uh, this plant uh, was pretty much all green. And uh, it, uh, it, it looked more like, like this plant that we're just about to talk about. But it transitioned into its uh, submerged state. And now you can see all this beautiful pinkish red coloration growing on the top of these stems. I think that looks gorgeous. Look at that. Ugh, beautiful. So this plant is fully transitioned. But I'm not selling this one because I'm trying to grow this out just so I have more, more immersed uh, uh, or sorry more submerged portions of it available and next to that we got some dark red Luigia. oh baby look at this beautiful 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 and next to that we got some money wart money wart is super super common been in the hobby for a billion years really easy to grow grows like a weed look at that nice purling action going on let me try to focus this uh, freaking cinema camera. <laughs> I just had to get the most complicated, biggest camera I could find, huh? I couldn't get a GoPro or something. <laughs> yeah, you can see a lot of nice purling action going on there. Beautiful plant. Then you can see the CO2. I have a CO2 diffuser down there injecting CO2 into the pond, diffusing it nicely. That's coming out of my 20 pound CO2 tank beautiful that thing lasts forever probably lasts me about uh, six months i would say which is forever in my opinion <laughs> okay so let's make our way to the other side of the pond and as we're making our way there i'll show you guys uh my auto top off system you may have seen this in a in a previous video but uh, this is attached to a float valve that keeps the uh, pond topped off with water this is a 50 gallon uh barrel drum whatever you want to call it and this lasts me about a week in the summertime when it's really really hot maybe half a week but uh, pretty much almost a week <laughs> so that's my auto top off system there's that famous micron sock that i was telling you guys about and that's of course in my sump filter and you can see i got some java fern just floating in there as well big pieces of java fern so if you want big pieces of java fern order them now as soon as you see this video and you, you should definitely get a nice big piece um, but yeah, the Micron sock, there it is, 100 Micron, and uh, there's my water pump. That's This pump actually is just a cheap pump from Amazon. It's actually nothing special, but this is 2,000 gallons per hour, and that goes into uh, the pond right here. And um, as you can see, I have this big, big pipe um, coming into the sump filter. That actually runs the full length of the pond all the way to where the intake is way 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 over there in the front of the pond and i'll show you guys that as we get closer to the end of uh, the pond but yeah that's my filtration system that's what i was talking about earlier with the micron sock and everything and that's what uh, keeps my water looking nice and crystal clear okay so here we go let's make our way over here uh we got some oh it's gonna get a little shady might have to Okay. Oh, okay, I got a little shady. Had to adjust the settings because uh, I'm standing in front of the sun now. <laughs> got some Crypt Brown right here. Nice, nice Crypt. Uh, that one is transitioning very nicely from uh, its immersed to its submerged state. Then we got some uh, regular Crypt Green. Been in the hobby for a billion years. That one's looking nice as well. You can see. Uh, a lot of the leaves are transparent and falling off. Uh, those leaves will die off and new ones will grow as this plant grows underwater. So this one should be ready to sell pretty soon. And these customers that order this one will get a fully submerged plant. 
and then in front of that we got some regular baby tears these are the uh, these aren't dwarf baby tears or uh, uh, pearl wheat or anything this is just regular baby tears you can see some nice pearling action on the, this plant as well awesome 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 then next to that we got some uh, broadleaf sagittaria this is a really cool plant for kind of bigger tanks and then in front of that we got some Luigia ovalis i like this plant because of the uh the color you can see that kind of like a uh, stripey color on the leaves i love that really really love that next to that we got some anacharis famous anacharis this has been in the hobby since the hobby first began <laughs> And then in front of that, we got some Ludwigia repens, just regular Ludwigia, beautiful plant. As you can see, this portion is more uh, yellowish green, and the ones in the back are more of a darker color. Um, as you probably have already guessed, uh, the ones in front are uh, just came in immersed, and they are transitioning, and the ones in the back are fully submerged and transitioned. So you can see that uh, they are they've changed color. But I think they look beautiful nonetheless. Red, that red coloration is just gorgeous. But again, remember that depends on the light you give your plants. You won't necessarily achieve the same results as me just because I'm growing my plants under such intense sunlight. But uh, if you're able to achieve the same thing with your aquarium with uh, intense light, you should be able to get some nice red Ludwigia coloration going on. <laughs> Next to that, we got some Oriental Sword. And these are just tiny little babies that I harvested from the much bigger plants that I got. And those are currently growing out. Those are pretty much too small to see. But Oriental Sword is a beautiful plant. It uh, has some pink, pink coloration on it, red coloration. I think it looks really cool. Then in front of that, we got some uh, Ozlot Red Swords. Uh, this one looks almost identical to Red Flame Swords. And that's the thing. Some of these swords look so similar. But uh, it's not. This is Ozlot Red. So this is a really, really beautiful sword. I like that one. You can see some pearling going on as well. See those bubbles right there? Look at that. that all that nice CO2. Here we go. More, more wisteria. <laughs> You're going to get really bored seeing this plant in the pond because it's everywhere. <laughs> in front of that, we got some Amenia. Uh, Senegalensis. We actually just made a video about that, a plant guide, so it's on my channel if you want to watch it. Over here, Mania gracilis. These are really nice uh, red, pinkish uh, plants. And then in front of that, some narrow leaf Sagittaria. Nice grassy plant. Grows like a weed. Really, really crazy growing plant. And then over here, we got some Cryplutea. I like this plant because of the pointy leaves. Beautiful, beautiful shape, beautiful coloration as well. And then next to that, we got some Ozlot Green Sword. This one is is speckled with uh, green specks, so uh, kind of like its cousin, uh, Red Flame and Ozlot Red, uh, except it's just green. <laughs> and then in front of that, we got some uh, Crypt Red. That one is currently transitioning, and all of its leaves are pretty much uh, dead. So we got some new leaves that'll grow out of there and there'll be some nice big beautiful plants soon those will be ready for customers in a little bit and then over here we got another uh sword plant and i think uh this is probably going to be the one that i struggle with the most remembering the name of because i just started selling this one <laughs> uh, but i will put the name on the screen for you guys right now i know i bragged about being able to remember all of them but this one i just started selling so it's uh it's uh gonna take me a little bit before I re i'm able to recognize it and remember, remember the name okay in front of that we got some cardamom lyrata it's a really cool plant a lot of people grow these in planted tanks and over here we got some anubius a uh, few different species anubius afsele anubius furziri anubius nanji uh, all growing in there looking great We've got some Apongaton Alvaceous uh, bulbs in there as well, trying to get those to sprout. Even though I sell them as a bulb on my website, I try to get them to sprout anyways for my customers, just so that the hard work is done and my customers get an already sprouted Apongaton plant. All right, in front of that, we got some Rotala Macrandra, beautiful variety of uh, Rotala. And as you can see, this one is this one came in immersed, so this one is transitioning. Next to that, we got some uh, 
Rotala Indica. Again, this one is transitioning as well, so it doesn't look like the traditional Rotala. In front of that, we got some uh, dwarf lily bulbs, trying to get those to sprout as well. Next to that, we got some banana plants. Banana, nana, nana plants. <laughs> and then over here, we got some uh, crypt, uh, crypt pechi, I think. Crypt prechi, or there's, yeah, either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but this one is transitioning as well and uh, you can see a bunch of the leaves are dying so this one will be ready for our customers as well uh, soon next to that Stardage and Repens I like this plant this plant is so cool Stardage and Repens is a nice carpeting plant this one is transitioning quite nicely as well and then in front of that Rotala Vietnam Atra Rotala Vietnam Atra that one is transitioning as well you can see that pretty much all the Rotala species they they all look the same in their uh, immersed uh, form <laughs> then over there i got some beautiful ladra that i'm currently uh, trying to grow out as well on some lava rock pretty cool those are just random varieties of buse nothing uh, i don't even know the exact uh, name which is why i sell buse on my website as a sorted buse just because uh, i don't promise any certain species and uh, here we go once again hygrophilia <laughs> Yeah, more hygrophilia. <laughs> uh, next to that, we got some hygrophilia willow. This plant, like I was mentioning earlier, gets really, really, really big. So just be prepared for that if you do buy this plant. And then in this bin, I got some Anubius congensis, Anubius uh, colfifolia, Anubius nana, and then Anubius hastafolia as well in there. Next to that, we got some hygrophilia blue. Hygrophilia blue next to the Hygrophilia willow. Once again, another big plant. And then this one is Hygrophilia coriambosa. This one is another big plant. Uh, the differences between all these is pretty much just, uh, I would say, the color. They all pretty much grow the same size. Um, nothing really different there. Uh, so this one's more lighter green. This one's more bluish uh, green, darker green. And this one is just a very... Um, like the leaf shape you know is different and it has kind of like similar to Luigio vallis it kind of has stripes in the leaves as well so that's pretty much the only differences and then over there in this bin is what i was mentioning earlier the uh glossostigma that i'm growing out you see a nice little carpet of that beginning to form pretty cool and then just some more empty bins more real estate for more plants <laughs> okay so now Let's make our way to these bins. I got some uh, narrow leaf java fern growing in here, and then Monte Carlo growing in there. Awesome, just free floating as well. I sell this stuff for, uh, so quickly, so I just throw it in a basket and uh, just wait for the sales to come in. <laughs> and then next to that, I got some java fern trident. A lot of people like this plant, and I got plenty of that in stock as well. And here's the intake I was telling you guys about. And that goes down underneath the pond. And then the pipe runs the full length of the pond. So there you have it. That is Super Pond. And that is all the plants I currently have growing in it. You can see the uh, future goldfish greenhouse uh, behind the pond there. Uh, still just the frame. I'm uh, working on finishing that soon, I promise. <laughs> I'll be making a video, don't worry. Uh, but yeah, that is Super Pond. And I mean, just look at this water clarity, guys. Oh, it's so crystal clear. Like you wouldn't even know that there was water in here. It's so clear. All right, so there you go. That's the tour of Super Pond and all the plants I currently have growing in it. Okay, so just bear with me. I'm gonna try to vlog with this 10,000 pound cinema camera for this outro. <laughs> uh, it's a little shaky, I apologize. I'm trying to hold it with oh, two hands now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys would like to buy any of the plants you've seen in this video, visit jacobsaquarium.com. And uh, if you'd like to follow me on social media, on my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all my social media links will be in the description below. And, don't, and if you have a question, comment, or concern, or whatever, post it in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And I love you guys very much. Have fun with your tanks. My arm's about to fall off. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so heavy. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.